All right, yesterday's Xbox <laughs> briefing. I'd stop trying to put me off, Phil. <laughs> had 14 <laughs> titles from Xbox Game Studios, over 60 games total, a surprise Keanu appearance, a new console, the return of Master Chief, and so much more as well. And here to walk us through that staggering list, <laughs> it's head of Xbox, Phil Spencer. How are you feeling, Phil? Staggering Phil Spencer. Staggering <laughs> Phil Spencer. Keanu was on our stage. How cool was that? I was just, how did it feel to be upstaged by Keanu? I, I was all good with that. <laughs> no problem there. Uh, he was such a sport. I thought it was great talking to him before and uh, I told him that gamers, Xbox fans, it's going to be more passion than maybe you find coming out for like a movie or something else. And yeah. talking to him afterwards, he was blown away, which is awesome. He's a, a total dude. Now, someone else who's a total dude who was on stage is Tim Schafer. Talk to us about Tim uh, and Double Fine Productions and what that means to add them to Xbox Game Studios. Yeah, you know, we've worked with Tim since back in the original Xbox days on the first Psychonauts. Uh, he did some great Xbox games through the years. As we're looking for great teams with a track record of creating really creative, differentiated talent, we approached him uh, about you know options for him and his studio as he's moving forward. Been talking to him for months, uh, and it was great to be able to announce where we are with Double Fine, and they'll be joining Xbox Game Studios. I thought Tim was fantastic on stage. So funny. He is hilarious. If people haven't watched the videos that they put up, uh, but no, I'm more. I'm really excited to just see with the kind of the financial stability that we can offer, the creative freedom that we can offer, what that studio is going to do. They obviously have Psychonauts 2, and they're going to go finish that. Uh, but I think the future for them and us is going to be great. Yeah, I trust you're connecting Tim with the XL team as well. Can't wait to see what they've got there. <laughs> now, yesterday was a really big day for Xbox Game Pass uh, as well. So we launched Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. Xbox Game Pass for PC entered the game as well. Yeah. What's it been like to watch that idea grow from just that, an idea, to something that is so powerful now. Yeah, two years ago, you know, two years ago here, well, over at the Galen, but two years ago is where we announced that we broke a record yesterday in terms of right. number of people signing up for Game Pass, which was just awesome nice. to see. You know, obviously bringing it to PC for the first time with over 100 games on PC, having Sarah come out and talk about Ultimate, you get Xbox Live Gold, you get Game Pass for console, Xbox Game Pass for PC, seeing it tremendous uptake in people signing up to that but also 34 games on our stage that are premiering into xbox game pass teams are really seeing the power of being in an at scale subscription for their game launching and reaching as many players as possible we're seeing some really great i'm playing a lot of outer wilds right now really fun game yep. but an awesome way to discover your next favorite game when you're a part of the subscription and so many games are coming in every month it's really great awesome i'm delighted that football manager is in uh, game pass for pc as well that's gonna kick my addiction off again um <laughs> now uh, you also and the we don't team call it addiction no okay my love <laughs> My love. Um, when uh, you and the team also introduced the world to Project Scarlet yeah. yesterday as well, you talked about your commitment to compatibility. Can you tell us more about what that means? You know, we, we stood on stage at E3 a few years ago and talked about Xbox 360 games coming to Xbox One. And then a couple years later, we talked about original Xbox games coming to Xbox One. So really, when I look at my Xbox One today, it's probably the most compatible console I've ever had. So we thought about our design for Project Scarlet. We definitely wanted to make sure that we were compatible across all the generations, not just with the games, but the accessories. Obviously, Xbox Live will continue, and you are who you are across the whole ecosystem, which creates, for us, it's really us respecting the purchases that our gamers have made on our platform. You know, some of these games people bought a decade ago in our digital ecosystem, you're going to turn on Project Scarlet and the entitlement's going to be there. You can go download the game and play. And as you know, gaming goes from really all physical to both a combination of physical and digital, I think us respecting the purchases that people have made at no charge, allowing them to be able to continue to play their games. And in many cases, those games play the best and look the base best on the new generation, which frankly isn't easy to do. Uh, is just something that I wanted to continue in Project Scarlet, and it's great to see us able to do that. Okay, you also talked about Project X Cloud and console streaming. Can you tell us a bit more about the, the difference between those two things? Yeah, you know, when I think about where we're going, we're going to see games that were created for Xbox or being created for Xbox today playable in many places. We're really focusing first on what it means to play these games on your phone. So when we thought about how can we get as many people playing on a phone as possible, Project X Cloud is us putting Xboxes in our data centers and allowing people to access those. But we scratch our heads and say, wait a minute, 
we have tens of millions of people who already have an Xbox One at home. What if they could turn their local Xbox into their own version of xCloud so they can stream out of their home? So we have two things coming this October. We've got our data centers with the blades in there, with the Xboxes in our data centers, so you can access Xboxes that we have and able to play games from there. Or if you already have an Xbox One or you're buying one this holiday, you're going to be able to turn that into a server that you can access on your phone from wherever you go. That No charge for that. And both of those things are launching this October. Fantastic. Or uh, previewing. I want to be clear on this because you know we're here at our first public preview of xCloud now, and we're seeing people playing Xbox games on their right phone over there, right, right over there. Yep. I'm getting tremendous reaction. But one of the things I've learned this generation is we should always be listening to what our customers want. You know, I'm not one that's going to tell them what they want or tell them what they should be doing. This is really about us putting options and choice in the hands of our customers and listening to the reaction that they have. So I love, we're spending a lot of time over there watching and listening to the thousands of gamers here that are gonna get their hands on. And when we launch our preview in October, it'll be the same way. Like I'm not claiming that everything, that we figured out every answer to every question, but I do know that it, me able to stay to my, connected with my Xbox Live community and my games wherever I go is gonna unlock more opportunity. All right, now E3, we know it's a huge moment for video games. We did another event last year, which personally I absolutely loved, XO18 down in Mexico City, an incredible experience. It was awesome. And I know it's a big deal to you, these XO events, right? <laughs> Do you have, perhaps, <laughs> any news for us about what we can expect from XO in the future? Yeah, you know, I, I get sometimes accused I'm a little corny on some of the nostalgia around Xbox. Um, and when us and the team were thinking about last year and bringing back XO, some of us remember we used to have XO, and this XO18, as you said, Mexico City, was so special with the fans. Absolutely doing XO19. We're doing it this November. We're going to hold it in London, yes. which will be incredible. Hey. We have XO19 <laughs> in London. Uh, I think it'll be great. We know we have such just a huge, passionate fan base in the UK. I used to live in London, right. so I have friends there. So it'll be fun going back. Uh, we have three studios in the UK, too, so it's really interesting now to think about our local creators that are there. So I'm really looking forward to XO19 this November in London. I think we're going to have a great time. That is amazing news. And you know I'm from the UK myself. Yes. So I know that the, the UK Xbox community are going to be absolutely over the moon about this. And uh, yeah, can't wait to hear more about it and, and be out yeah, there for Gamescom, Xo. I think we're going to give some more details awesome. and you know, make sure that everybody knows how to get signed up, knows how to get there. So All right. Good. So just to wrap up, Phil, personal highlight for you yesterday? This is a little bit just for me. Um, Yesterday, my two daughters were here at nice. uh, E3 for the first time, first and time. Uh, they used to, you know, they're watching on TV. I was able to get them here uh, and come and see the show, see Dad on stage to them. I'm just Dad, yeah. uh, but you know, and I think about the connection to the fans and the community that so many of us have. Some of my really good friends are here, and I see them at Fan Fest every year. Mm -hmm. And being able to have my my two daughters here and that whole connection was great. Obviously, love the games, love everything that we we're going to go do. But I think for me, E3 is as much about the business and the strategy and all of that as it is just as a community of creators and gamers coming together here in one place um, and really celebrating our love of this art form. And it was special to me to be able to have my, uh, my family here with me, awesome. which is awesome. That's a great story. Hey, congratulations, congratulations on a great briefing. Thanks for stopping by and being with us, Phil. Really Thank appreciate you. it.